new patch we've got to expect new things and this is what we talked about before but at least going into today we would have a, a highlight tristana segment coming up later with edg lng but tristana the champion that hasn't changed still in a strong position a really powerful pick you can flex her into multiple soul lanes as well we've seen shahu do that in the top side very powerful uh just for them into the late game and this is what we expect out of we i think against uh some of the more lottery teams in the lpl they're not going to try and show their cards they're just going to play everything yep. super standard and probably just go for late game it's going to be omg that has to throw a wrench in the works and try to challenge them with early game and what a better champion to do it on than cold's alistar this is probably his best champ and we've seen him go for these flanks and outside of lane ganks quite often now the biggest question is what changes here, right? Because usually it is the 80 carry picked up, but will it be a standard? Hecarim still there here for the LPL. The Udyr is a quick response, something that's still strong. And yeah, the jungle may turn in, in, into a less farming, um, excuse me, a, a less of a farming place, but you're still there. You're still going to pull up early levels. And so far, pick and ban looks standard like we haven't changed. Yeah, we actually have saw, saw a lot of bleed through from 11 point um, on 11.3 like a lot of the LPL players because they were already on live they just mm. kind of import the meta retroactively so uh, a lot of picks we should expect to be rather sim uh, rather similar but the timings will be off just by a little bit I don't think you're going to see Hecarim hit level 6 so soon and of course the main uh. power spike that he gets with the turbo cam tank is also going to come later I'm sorry guys I, I really didn't yeah. think LeBlanc was coming here today I didn't want to no. talk about it yeah, That's all right, Clement. Hey, you, you did your do job right. We still see the Kaiser, and yeah, there's some small adaptations, small changes, uh, but Kaiser's still in a, in a great position, right? It's like Udyr, who had his clear, or at least his AoE aura down, but not enough to pull them out of the meta, and still on 11.5, the Kaiser gets picked up, and again, standard so far, but we have to see what how this gets rounded out. At the least for WE, we know that they're a team that can set Breathe up, and maybe the top lane reigns in some new picks here as we're starting to ban some away from WE's side. Looks like OMG are saving their last pick for... Uh, have, they probably do it for for Ooming instead of New. Mm. New has been more much more of a weak side player. So I don't think they're necessarily going to pick top lane. Uh, they're, they're probably going to pick top lane next here. On, on WE's side, this is actually interesting because they're going for a pretty strong priority mid jungle. We still have Udyr as probably the best champion on the patch. And uh, Zoe is not exactly a Shanks champion. He is yep. much more about the Orianna and Cassiopeia. I think this is trying something new for their squad. We're going to see how this one actually goes and if they can actually uh, increase the tempo through a champion like Zoe. Because this is a champion that actually necessitates some early action if you want to snowball properly. That's right. You know, it can be set up by the Udi really nice as well. Good CC chain in the 2v2. and. Uh, on the OMG side, picking up the top lane, you're exactly right. Wooming gets that last pick priority. And now for WE, they have to put their cards on the table. And it is about what Breathe wants to take into the NAR. Does he want to look for the counter matchup or just something that's a front line? You already have a lot of scaling here and going to run the GP into it, which a lot of players have seen as getting the early priority over the NAR and actually doing okay as well. So there is a lot of snowball potential in this game for WE, Clement. I did want to see the Jace come out. I feel like with the mm. Zoe, a double pull comp would have been pretty sweet. True. But of course, Game Plank is nice as well. And with the Game Plank, it just means that this strategy is focused more towards the bottom side of the map. You have that cannon barrage going down there. Um, and Zoe should be able to leave lane if that pick ends up uh, something like a Victor from OMG. We just saw them flashing through both the uh, Kiana and the Victor pick. So we're going to see which one it is. LeBlanc has been considered somewhat of a counter to Zoe, okay. but it's a really, really rare pick. And I'm not sure how this one actually ends up going. This is going to be, I believe, the first LeBlanc that we've seen from Ooming this entire year. Yeah, I mean, this is great because we just talked about Everfrost and everyone picks up Everfrost. So the real question is, are you going to pick it up on LeBlanc when you can actually utilize it with a quick distortion uh, activation? That's something we can talk about going into game, Clement. You're going to walk me through these compositions because I see a lot of scaling actually on the side of WE, but you already mentioned the snowballing capabilities and how Shanks is in the position to set up early. So both of these compositions are trying to move their mid laners. That's going to be the, I think, the main deciding factor out of these. If okay. Zoe can get to the bottom lane first with Cannon Barrage, I think that's going to be a flat out win for WE. But on the other side, they're trying to kind of prevent that play by just going with the LeBlanc counter pick. We have seen this in the past, especially from someone like Scout, 
who really likes to just jump on your portal jump position. If Zoe comes in onto you, you can really dodge it out quite easily with your first dash and then go back in with the uh, the, the mirror onto the portal jump to get a lot of damage onto uh, Zoe. Uh, she has to go back, so that also makes it easy for chains to land, but it's not really a champion that we have seen uh, in this year whatsoever. 2021 has yeah. not been great for LeBlanc. <laughs> and I, I think the problem is that she's just not a very good teamfight champion. We don't really see the um, we don't really see her being utilized even by the best LeBlanc players, and also it's a bit of a tier meta. So a lot of mid laners have been just going back and doing cheater recalls, and that cuts down on the time that LeBlanc can harass people down quite significantly. It, it hits on the note, note that we talked about earlier in the split, where mid lane has just been a farm fest, right? It hasn't been about yeah. dominating laning phase and. I feel like partly, you know, Rookie hasn't been playing the lane to fruition. A lot of these other top laners, mid laners, top mid laners, excuse me, haven't been dominating the lane either. Of course, I, I don't know how I do it, but every time I always bring in IG into a series, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go into game one, though, and for WE in their home arena, trying to get closer towards locking in playoffs, OMG on their last legs here in the 2021 Spring Split. Welcome to 11.5, the first region locking this forward, and... We're going to learn a lot going into today. Seeing the LeBlanc already is quite exciting as we have an Electrocute from Wooming as well. Electrocute from Shanks. Double Ignite mid Clement. And you know what? That's uh, that's an opportunity for success for whoever gets ahead. Yeah, this is uh, not something we see every day. Typically, we do see the Unsealed Spellbook coming out from Shanks, but he wants to get some action in as well. In this matchup between Udyr and Hecarim, we do expect Udyr to have the upper hand just in terms of farming and dueling uh, for the first couple of levels. So we'll see if Shanks can kind of use that. But as it goes later into the game, um, LeBlanc is slightly favored into this matchup. We have seen, once again, Scout kind of use this as a, um, as a counter matchup. And yep. taking a look at the jungle pathing, we are going to have both sides heading towards the top. I'd say a little bit more favorable for uh, WE here, as you typically see the NAR chunk down against the game plank. Let's also remind the audience that it was actually a leash given by Eric and Cole. I think Jomong and Missing didn't actually participate. So they're out in the lane first. And the one thing that's remained the same from 11.3 to now is the fact that we still see bot laners uh, getting ready for a two start. As Missing goes in, this is a small trade. Halo Blades for both 80 carries, and I think Eric and Cole actually win that one out. Oh, they win it pretty handily. Typically, Alistar versus Leona. Whoever goes in first will lose the trade. And as we are taking a look at the top lane, with that grass proc going on, it's always quite hard for Gnar in the early levels. This is yeah. kind of interesting, like Gnar versus Gameplink historically sometimes has even favored the Nar, but with the sheen changes uh this year around going to 700 gold and keeping the same amount of damage output uh it has been game playing just as a straight up counter against the Nar. so there's gonna be a lot of pressure top lane we already see breathe uh, warding out the potential entry points for aki and aki is not gonna have an impact in this top lane with those two wards going down yeah being on blue side having an early tri brush ward especially against the hecarim feels so nice here and there's Gangplank as well. Uh, you've got the setup for the barrel chain in case Hecarim comes in, adding the slow. Just something to keep wary of. As we will note that Aki is quicker in the clear. And let's go back to the point we're talking about coming into today, Clement. You know, it is going to be a slower level lead for the jungle. We remember at 11.3, junglers, there were times where junglers just had the highest level in the game. It was in incredible. It was quite ridiculous, even in early parts, without that much of a significant lead. So we are going to get a slower pace out of the junglers. And we are going to get jungle leads that aren't as extravagant as they were. As this is a bit of a setup in the top lane. Clement, you talked about it. Doesn't matter if Aki's here. Pushed into the wall. Breathe overextends with a massive wave setup. He'll use the orange, but he's dead anyway. And OMG punish fast. They had the wards, but Breathe just went so far in trying to get... I I'm not exactly sure what he was trying to do right there. Like, getting those two auto attacks off on the tower didn't seem worth it compared to the reset he could have gotten. He was just trying to zone... Uh, his enemy away but aki comes in with the ghost he doesn't go cheap on the summoners whatsoever yeah. just rushes him down and breathe saves his flash he knew he overextended kind of a silly play <laughs> for me uh in, in the top lane given the lead that he had and the snowball potential and you also have to point out that kill actually went back to new so new is actually ahead in this lane right now <laughs> yeah it's it's oh man it's incredible to see that start from we's top lane i mean kind of characteristic where breathe has been you know, a decent part of WE's success. So 
a, a really sloppy start. You're right. First blood goes over to New as well on this Nar. And I feel like the matchup's going to change where he's able, now able to push out. We might see these early boots coming through as well, Clement. And giving you maybe a bit more success in this lane from now on. Yep, uh, just looking at the bot lane trade, of course, Trisana can always buffer the WQ combo coming out from Cold. Yep. Very easy jump away from him here. And uh, I, I do want to see something actually develop in this bottom side. I, I think this is what oh W is. God, oh hang on, Flashing God. Knight, Paddlestar, Wooming One Auto. What? It's a solo kill. Shanks may go down, but man, Zoe just solo killed a LeBlanc. Well, uh, Umi really shouldn't have tried to face check that bro. <laughs> Try to follow Tr Zoe there. Gets the full combo onto his face and just dies. That's uh, very unexpected. Once again, Umi actually selected LeBlanc as the counter pick. Doesn't come out ahead. Not over though. Eric in the bottom lane almost kills Joel Mung. OMG's bottom lane actually doing quite well here. And yeah, coming back to mid, it's kind of funny because he face checked. He wanted to stop the back. And this is what we're talking about. It's double ignite from these mid laners with Electrocute. The kill threat is there and... Uh, Shanks tries to bring it on. Clement, let's look again. Yeah, this is just a little bit of a late ward coming in from LeBlanc. A good flash in by Shanks. Knows his damage numbers beautifully. And uh, that was actually a decent chain coming out from Uming. So even though he goes down, the gold lead actually goes over to OMG with that extra assist gold. We do have to factor that in. That's 50% of the killed gold going over to the jungler. And uh, it, all in all, it wasn't actually that terrible for Uming. Just kind of unnecessary <laughs> let's just put it that well way as omg also find themselves a decent trade on the bottom side this is not technically how we expect the bottom side to work usually we just think of uh, the ad carries canceling each other out and um and uh tristana getting the push but omg has actually played this bottom side really really well i, I felt like the engages were a lot better from their side and they're yeah. actually able to get an extra summoner compared to their ad carry yeah, I mean, we saw the trade on Eric before, right? Eric to Jomong, rather. Uh, forced out the heal. Jomong almost went down. And as we come back and get the dragon over to OMG, they start off with the mountain. This game, starting out in OMG's favor, punishing the top lane. Wooming, trading off mid you talked about, getting the objective as well. And this is what I was talking about against Rogue Warriors. OMG actually looked pretty concise for a team that is towards the bottom of the standings and for a team that's been so messy throughout the regular season. Yeah, OMG are the team that has probably one of the best supporting cast in the entirety yeah, of the LPL. Agreed. Like, Aki and Cold are, are phenomenal players. The only problem is OMG does not have carries. That's always what comes to bite them in the end of the game. The best scenario for them has typically been for Aki to pop off. If Aki gets his blue cane going, if he gets a fed Skarner early and just taxes everyone, that's great. Bottom lane, though. That's a flash forward. Teleporting burn as well. Jomong's already used the rocket jump. Missing. Stunned up into the wall. Gets sent. Missing follows him as well. Ignites down. Two-man pulverized. Missing goes into his death. And OMG, the proactive plays there again. This is really what happens when your top lane loses out and you're trying to perma-shove bot at the same yeah. time. Uh, we saw the teleport difference from Breathe. He had to TP directly after that first kill. There's no answer coming out from the game plank. And, you know, Tristana is going to shove. That's what she does. She can't control it. That's just her impulse. And OMG punish it to the maximum extent. Just very clean play from them. Trade from WE, though, is this top lane tower, but definitely going to be well worth for OMG. Breathe getting back into the lane, meanwhile. Beishunk started up the Rift Herald. Both junglers are level 7 here, so that could be a contest from Aki as Cold's moving as well. Uh, Shanks actually getting the bubble. On Lord of Shadows used, but Zoe now going to get chained. And WE, this is just not a good start. Shanks goes in by himself. He's taken down. Herald has to be pulled off of. And this early game is falling apart. A lot of people actually rotated for that one. Beishan was on the Herald for a significant amount of time. And look at that tempo lead on that, uh, on that top side. There's no one actually walking up right now to defend. And with this Herald going down, it actually allows for... Uh, there, I, I would prefer to see them just drop it mid and give Uming some extra gold. I yeah. think that's actually preferable, given that LeBlanc has to snowball to kind of keep her relevant. So we'll see if that one actually happens. But in the meantime, with Tristana trading tempo, it's always her risk. She can strip towers down super, super quickly. And they know that Aki is still going to take a while to get back into this lane. So we are going to see about 320 gold traded back um, onto WE's bottom side. The Herald Gold kind of being nullified there. It really is. 
as it gets taken down. Just note that it was only one bit of turret plating to be taken. Turret plating for the second time around actually not given over to Joe Mong, who was pushing before. So just the 160 for now. And I think it's important to note that for OMG, they've got a 1k gold lead here in this game. But even after everything, I mean, breathe yet again. Solo in this lane as OMG finally moved new from the bottom lane, but he walks all the way up. Three bits of turret plating. I mean, just staying in these lanes does feel like Breed's mitigated a lot of the pressure that OMG were taking. I'll be honest, I, I really don't like preemptive lane swapping yeah. uh, to stop Herald. And especially against Tristana, I feel like a lot of teams fall for this trap. Uh, what we've seen from FPX as well is they do this. They start a Herald, the enemy team tries to interrupt, and their Tristana never leaves the lane. And what often actually ends up happening is that Tristana wins that side of the trade because you can take two turret platings for the Herald and still come out on top. Uh, in the meantime, OMG actually lost a lot of proc uh, lost a lot of CS on um, both their top laner and their ADC. <laughs> a lot of CS, a lot of experience, and the fact is, Breathe was suffering a little bit in this lane after getting bullied early. Three bits of turret plating versus none for new. I mean, now there's a, a big gold lead on Breathe as well. So we'll be watching this GP into the next back because it feels like first item will be coming quickly. The Essence Reaver is still the priority here, while new is with the Hearthbound Axe. So. Should be seeing Nart with the Mythic soon enough as well. I want to note, Clement, that, you know, I will be watching mid because Wooming here is, is ready for the Mythic. I want to see what it is going to be to start us off and see if we do get an Everfrost LeBlanc. It still looks like the Tempest uh, coming out. The penetration probably still favored, um, given that your target selection is mainly for the backline. And we do see Shanks trying to counter that with the early Merc Treads as well for the double train. Indeed, Aki is just going to pop this mid lane. This is what I want to see out of them. Get that gold over to Ooming. That's always necessary on the LeBlanc. And we'll just see how much they can actually get right here. Very quick he clear. Didn't oh, he didn't get any. Oh, yeah, it was only, only the jungle. Yeah, only went over to Aki. So Ooming was oh. too far away instead of distorting in for the quick hit. And uh, yeah, kind of sad. Kind of sad that he wasn't in range, so... Wooming not getting any. Aki picks it up, but the Herald does push down the turret a little bit. His new's going for the dive. The flash away from Breed. It's matched by New. Picks up the house. Second throws there. Breed is paying respect, but now he can walk back to lane after everything's used. New's going to take two, maybe three turret shots at the end, but he will be able to stay healthy enough to clear. That was very close to a solo kill. He was able to land that slow. He has double boots over Gameplank plus True. the hearth Hearthbound hacks. So... A bit unfortunate right there. I actually like the idea. That was definitely in range of a kill. Just missed two boulders in, in a row. But it doesn't really uh, matter that much as OMG still picks up the Drake stack in the bottom side. Also important to note that Breathe has ulti. You know, at this point, we have to keep track for the global uh, of WE here. And every time it come, comes to an objective, WE's top laner can add his impact uh, with the Cannon Barrage as well. So also keeps him busy enough in the top lane where he might have to use it defensively. Things might change, though, because Clement, he has gone for the defensive option with his plated seal caps. Essence Reaver there now for Breathe as well. Iron Spike Whip just picked up by New, so no first item here. And this is the difference in that solo lane time we were talking about for the top lane GP that has given Breathe an advantage in this game when he was killed earlier for first blood. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, GP still holding on quite well in terms of the CS lead. But I, I think at this point, we are going to see OMGs just... Being able to use his Nar to out impact the GP in terms of team fights, he's gonna have priority, and he's coming in for the flash. Aki ready to dive. Real flash burnt there by Shanks. Half health immediately. Chains connecting this game for Wooming, who now has the Tempest you were mentioning. Upset, I don't see the Everfrost, but of course it does feel like it <laughs> makes more sense to go for the Ludens here in this situation as well. So Mythic's coming on online here for OMG. And that little pick sets them up for a bit of tempo as well. Turret plating went down earlier in the mid lane, but with the shove out, more deep vision set up here by Wooming, while New also pushes the top lane. So that tracking will help a lot. And WE is... This is just sort of an awkward game where I think everything just went wrong from their top lane gank. Yeah. They missed the TP, the bot lane gets dove, so they're not winning in any of those lanes right now. And uh, I actually have a hard time seeing where WE actually... How they contest on this next Drake. This is going to be a huge one here. Um, you have OMG potentially with a great follow-up. This is a composition that can catch people quite easy. We have seen Onslaught of Shadows into Kaisa's uh, Killer Instinct. You yeah. can chain that. It does count as an immobilize. So there's a lot of catch potential that OMG can just throw through. And with Aki and Umi both being rather fed 
This is very dangerous. As you talk about catch, there's the follow through. Jomong dead. Eric flashes the end. Not needed. But at the very least, kill goes over to cold. So there you go, Clement. Catch potential even on the Tristana as Jomong burns double sums. Yep, absolutely huge. This means no double sums for Jomong as we go into the next Drake fight. Yep. It's already been a uphill battle for them, and now it's going to get even worse. It's a very rare game where we don't see uh, WE actually off to a good start. They actually had one of the highest KDAs at 15, especially for Beishong. Boy. And now he's gonna, finally going to get through a game. Really nice barrel chain from Breathe. The third comes out of nowhere, and Yu's definitely dead here. Want to give it over to Breathe. He gets the shutdown, and now all of a sudden, W back in control on this top side. Bot might be getting killed, Clement, but Breeze a level 11 GP who has the top lane to himself. Yeah, after that kill, though, the, uh, the Turplate's gold is already gone, so he's not going to be able to pick that one up. Sure. However, this top lane, we do see some great action being chained out right here. OMG, I don't think they're going to be actually in time to stop this Herald, but... Uh, looks like W don't even want the fight either. Um, their bot lane was rotating over, and uh, I, I felt like they actually had enough time to finish it, but they just didn't want to chance that one. And they're straight giving it over at this point. This is just going to be uh, OMG taking up with the objectives. On the meantime, W do get the bot lane tower, but this tower for me doesn't have as much value. This was already going down. We saw it down to two plates already, so it's, it wasn't a full tower, and there was no turret plates given over. So... This is, uh, this, I think this is actually a fine trade for OMG. With the Herald, this means that they can secure the third Drake rather easily with the Fork. And uh, at this point in the game, I actually think that gives priority over the first Brick Gold on the bot side. Because I was going to ask you that, you know, the first Brick's good keeping WE even in this game when they have a lot of scaling. But you're right, you know, the Dragon coming through, third Dragon and then force the Soul. Feels like OMG are going to be at the perfect point in this game where they're going to have this huge mid game with LeBlanc, with Kaisa, the Nar and Hecarim. You talked about the catch potential that'll really be at its peak. And OMG can force a fight, force a pick that might give them over the soul and change the landscape of this game. As you can even see, Jomong at half health, man. Wooming's LeBlanc has been going steady and steady's a danger for this AD carry. W are not actually a tanky team themselves. They really want to play around priority from Zoe and Udyr, but they don't have it this game. So when it comes to the team fight, there's so many different targets that you can just run Onslaught of Shadows into. Hecarim's really hard to kill at this point in the game. He has way too much HP and survivability with the Spirit of Dread. And uh, I think W actually have to be proactive here. If they are the ones caught out, Shanks and Jomo are not going to survive the combo. They're, they're just going to straight up be completely blown up. So, I actually like what W are doing here. They're not grouping up. They're not really trying to contest this one. Instead, they're just saying, we have to wait this one out. We've been beaten. Let's just get some more gold onto the game blank and see if scaling can save us. But now Sol, though. Five minutes in, Sol will be coming up. If they're going to lose this one, then they have to win the next. At the very least here for WE, uh, uh, what is it, Clement? Going to be like a 22-minute ocean Sol for OMG to contest and... At that point, though, you do have to fight, and it does feel like OMG will still have a lot of success with the composition. So uh, what do you need to see for WE to get themselves in a better position to delay out this game and, I, I guess, deny OMG the soul coming up? Uh, it's a really tough game for them to play right now. For WE, I think their advantage is still in Game Plank and Tristana. Their scaling advantage will come out. Tristana in the late game, we have been able to see actually do a lot better uh, compared to someone like the Kai'Sa, just has 661 range in the late game. Also, with the extra attack speed with Rapid Fire, is uh, she's she's a really good third item late game carry, much better than what Kai'Sa can do for you in a front to back team fight. And Gameplank is kind of similar, and he has great scaling as well. So they're kind of waiting it out at this point. But the problem is, I don't think they're going to be able to. Uh, to survive the storm. I think the key item we need to see from Jomong is he definitely needs to get that Phantom Dancer before the next Drake fight. Phantom Dancer is a huge power spike. You get about a thousand gold worth of attack speed if you land those four autos on anyone. Yeah. So that's a great start, but he really needs that to kind of get them on even footing. <laughs> We'll be watching because he's not even there yet, right? Like, we have what could be the makings with the Longsword into the Lord Dominic's regard. Uh, we've seen Tristanus go for the Phantom. You talk about all the Lord Dominic's, but it does feel like the, the attack bit on comp that is rather squishy. That is at a point of early tankage. I guess I'll coin that with new and, uh, and cold still building those items. 
It feels like the attack speed is going to be more valuable stat. We'll watch Jomon closely. As for WE right now, they're just trying to defend their vision. Like OMG being so aggressive and you can see waves pushed up in the solo lanes. OMG respecting that they have priority. Yeah, I think uh, OMG is doing exactly what they need to right now. They're just trying to hold off to vision for picks and... The key thing to look at is they want to get summoners. If they can get summoners before the Dragon Soul, that's absolutely massive. A lot of times they will be able to trade just double chain into double distort for something like a heal or flash out of Jomo. They get that. That's a huge win. That's what they're playing for right now. And for the rest of the map, W just want to disengage. They just want to farm up. They don't want any action to be created. It's a composition that, again, you talked about, you know, there's not this hard front line. You have engaged with Leone, you have a lot of CC on the team. I guess Udia as well, but it's nothing like a sign, nothing like the Nah offers as well. So I think for WE here, Clement, you know, we're, we're looking at probably one of their weakest starts of the game. Uh, WE are a team who are 8-3 and three in the league. Remember, this is a top-tier playoff team against OMG, who's pretty much out of the runnings, uh, out of everything, apart from, you know, in, in... What's the word I'm looking for? actually out in the leaderboard uh omg are, are putting on a bit of a clinic i was highlighting them against rogue warriors highlight them again now kind of excited to watch this next dragon fight because it's a minute 40 till that comes up look at the second items being built it's actually new on the nar who has zorando and zoman it's banshee's veil for wooming as well those two items are going to be absolutely massive against a zoe and speaking of i mean shanks is only an item and a half as we approach fast yeah, and uh, we see WE going for more frontline uh, damage target selection here with the Last Whisper and also Leandri's Anguish. Sure. So just judging by these items, these are not your we're going to play for pick sort of situation. They they know they're kind of beat in this situation. They're not even going to try. And I think the uh, for this Drake fight, it's, it's going to be really hard for them to maneuver. If you look at the item from Jomong, he's not going for the two item spike. Two item spike in terms of Phantom Dancer is a lot stronger. But if you want to deal with the Hecarim in the later phase of the game, then of course, Lord oh Dominic's my is better. Oh my god. Yeah, I miss LeBlanc in the meta. Is now missing from the other angle, getting caught out. Base Shunk walks in front of OMG, doesn't pay the respect. Killer Instinct, Solar Flare lays him down, but doesn't matter. He cleanses away, and Eric does it again as he flashes away, picks up the double, on Sword of Shadows into the back line. Aki's bit of Tokyo drift in the side. Wooming will get hit with a troll bubble. Breed trying to clean this kill up, but Aki there. Ooh. One hit wonder. Breed comes in to make it more even than it was, but OMG still with a two for one package. Yep, that's going to start them at 4v3, and most crucially, there is going to be no jungle in this, in this next fight. Shanks has to be the one to pick this one up. I believe right now he still has the damage to actually outsmite if he can get a max range paddle star and uh, just get some auto attacks or damage going in onto the objective at the same time. But it's going to be very, very difficult. Let's see if Shanks can do it as he's trying to hit things over the wall. I mean, look, Mew's just running patrol. Dragon goes down. There's the soul. And WE now going up against a team that is going to extend these trades, Clement. Very bad territory for the 8 and 3. Yeah, WE are... <laughs> We have talked about this, but this matchup is absolutely crucial for them. If they can get into playoffs, it just takes so much pressure off of the team. But OMG are making a bit of a comeback fight right here. That was a that was a surprising mid lane team fight because Aki wasn't even involved. Like he didn't even need to go into the fight. Yeah. They just picked off Jomong with Killer Instincts and the damage coming out from LeBlanc. So they didn't even get their full combo online and it was already too much for W to handle. And look, let's provide context here because, you know, comeback in terms that OMG in the standings is a comeback. But OMG have been in control of these picks all game long as it started with Wooming on LeBlanc. Yeah, Jomong actually tries to hold on to his summoners for the ensuing Drake fight. I like the idea here. Um, however, the damage is already done and OMG cold is just so goddamn on point in these team fights. He's able to catch Beishang out, make sure the smite isn't going to be intervened. A great find by Shanks in the end, but just not enough to actually claw themselves back into the Drake pit. I love the swipe, the trial by fire swipe that just one shot Wooming. So an entertaining game to say the very least is, you know, Wooming going down meant that part of the pick potential was gone, but it didn't matter. Soul given over. OMG have it all as they're over the wall again. Beishang at half health. The Udia layer down. Onslaught of Shadows hits again. Killer Instinct follow up. Clement 
Your comp analysis was on point, man. Look at that follow through from OMG as they've taken two more and Baron staring them in the face. Wooming still going forward into missing. And this LeBlanc is wreaking havoc alongside OMG. We call that the fear factor. We've seen it before from JD Gaming pulling off the same sort of combo. Albeit with the fiddle sticks, it works every single time. Such a great <laughs> backline, uh, backline chase. And OMG, a team that we really didn't expect anything out oh, of, is taking it to Lord. WE. And WE walked on in thinking maybe they can get close towards the Baron way too far. And missing will be yet another member to drop down. 11 to 3, and OMG is the pure underdogs, plain and simple, are handing it to WE. Really wonder what WE were thinking about this game, trying to go for this draft. We have to mention once more that this isn't your typical WE draft. This is oh, a yeah. much more early pace action. We actually have seen WE go a lot more for Azir's, Orianas, Cassiopeia's in the mid lane. Just keep that control mage here. I think this was just like Shanks trying something new. They wanted to get himself warmed up a little bit and look forward to other matches. But this time around, Ooming had his number. And this comp in the late game, if you look at Udir and Zoe that aren't fed, they just don't do much in the team fights. They, they really just get ran over. <laughs> really don't. Club, look again, because I think this is after the Baron. No, this is a pick that started Baron. Yeah. This is a pick that started Baron. Beishang isn't tanky enough to withhold the damage right now. And that was Ooming uh, bursting him down. Like, Eric wasn't even involved in that kill. They have enough damage to just go through the Udir at this point. Uh, if you look at his items, he didn't go for the Force of Nature. He is going to go for the Armor item instead. So, Ooming actually had a very easy time just locking Beishang down. And uh, I don't really see how W get back in this game. I, I honestly don't. I think they have the scaling potential, but they're so far gone at this point. 25 minutes, already 4k down. And OMG have that Wombo combo to just kill the backline. Jomong still with no flash. Neither does Shanks have it. I mean, Eric, who has been following up on these engages so beautifully, is a full item ahead of Joel Mung. And remember that Joel Mung got a bit of turret plating. He got the first brick. But as you were saying in this game, it, it, it might not have mattered because OMG were keeping tempo, keeping pace. And especially across these side lanes, OMG have been taking names as a WE threatened here for an inhibitor turret in the bottom lane. Apparently, I sound like a frog when I try and say inhibitor. Trouble bubble connects. WE, are they going to go in? Missing's waiting. Cold on the wing. Two level advantage in support as well just shows you you can tell how confident omg are about this one they're just here to play cannon guard duty in the meantime aki nearly solo takes down the tower this yeah. is gonna be a two inhibitor tower push coming in from omg and we they, they can't do anything about this even with aki in the mid lane oh they're finally going in oh my god beishong's just dead hi missing by missing hi joe mung and by joe mung too wooming that's his clone as he actually will get taken down shanks against the nexus now dealing with Aki. Four dead though for WE. Two down for OMG. And again, they wipe them clean with an inhibitor down and now the threat of the game too. Gonna be a three for one. Shank's the only one left to defend this and it's just not enough. Uh, the closest one up is gonna be Leona, but she doesn't provide damage. OMG are actually just gonna finish this one right, they are. right now. They're minute 23 and a half minutes in the game, dude. Shanks trying to defend this, and he's done enough damage to you, so maybe they play it safe. But at the very least, OMG, they're holding control all across this map. They've got double inhibitor down. And Shanks, he's done a good job of defending, but OMG will break that last inhibitor. They'll run for their lives. Beishang on the chase, but let's see if the UD really can run stun. Because OMG here, it's a 5k gold lead, and the game is almost over pre-30. This is absolutely insane against W. Uh, I feel like W actually got a little bit lucky right there. The minion wave thinned out from OMG. WE in this team fight, they see Aki split pushing. They have to go all in. Beishang does a half committal. Like, he doesn't even try to flash on the carries. Yeah. Dies instantly. Breathe actually trades one back, and that was huge on their part. If Eric was still there, they could have ended the game right then and there. But with that going on, um, WE lived to fight another day. The problem is, I think that W have to be the one to go super aggressive in this one. They yeah. do not survive a combo from OMG. So they have to be the ones to look at pick off pieces before the fight itself even starts. As they're waiting for a bit of a pick, you know, playing aggressive in this bush, sure, but maybe separated for now onto missing. A lot of damage here from OMG, remember. 
Watch Wooming. Watch the likes of Eric on this Kaiser as news going forward. Ready for the Nar Ulti. He's stunned up against oh, the God. wall. There's four. They fly on in. And immediately the setup is just gorgeous. OMG clean down WE. Bree trying to beat the GP that 1v5. But man, you ain't been here in this series. You ain't been in this game. But you are put in the bin for game number one. OMG, just with a magnificent team fight, they go in a triple slam down from New, and everyone evaporates from WE. There isn't enough tankiness on this squad 